Get everybody in. Tom Tugendhat. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. May I first of all welcome the Government's plans for sanctions uh, and increased action uh, in trying to clean up the mess that we find ourselves in here in the UK. It's certainly a welcome step in the right direction, and the, uh, my honourable friend who's on the front bench, my right honourable friend who's on the front bench, will remember that the Foreign Affairs Committee set out various options for how we should begin to think about this in May 2018 when we published our Moscow's Gold Report. Now, I welcome the direction that we have taken, but I find myself, I'm afraid, along with many others on all sides of this House, asking why not more? Why not further? Because what we're doing now is we are, in many ways, using the actions of a hostile state in eastern Ukraine to justify something that we should have done years ago. The UK, sadly, has for too long been an avenue for money laundering for despots and criminals around the world. For too long, we have seen our institutions, our city, our service sector, used to hide the gains of corrupt practices abroad and, indeed, sadly, on too many occasions of criminality. And this has now come to a head. And it's come to a head because those criminals, those thieves, who have raped and murdered the Russian people for 20 years, who didn't replace the oligarchs that rose up in Yeltsin's day, but merely nationalised them, have been using those same vehicles, those same avenues, to hide the profits of their crimes, the theft, most tragically, of an entire country. And that act, that act of naked brutality, that act of violence against an entire nation, an entire culture, an entire people, has been one that has sadly been allowed to profit a small number of individuals. And that is an absolute tragedy. It's a tragedy for the people of Russia who have lost so much. It's a tragedy for her neighbours who are now under such pressure and such threat. Not just Ukraine, but actually the people of Belarus, the people of Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, the people of Poland. It's a tragedy for those who are being weaponised in the human trafficking that we're seeing out of the Middle East through Belarus into the forests of Eastern Europe. It's also, sadly, a tragedy for the people of these wonderful islands, the people of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the people of the United Kingdom. And it's a tragedy for us, because what this marks is what our right honourable friend, the honourable lady for Maidenhead, raised only a few hours ago in this chamber. That what we're actually seeing is not just the aggression against Donetsk and Luhansk. It's not just a raid, an invasion, an opening salvo of a war that President Putin is trying to bring to Europe for the first time, in many ways for the first time in 80 years, although of course there was an exception to that in 2014 when he invaded Crimea and another one in 2008 when he invaded Georgia. It's not just that. It's that actually what he is doing to us to the people of these islands is he is unpicking the values and principles that our grandparents fought for 80 years ago. He is unpicking the principle that we embedded into the constitutions of the United Nations, of the Council of Europe. He is unpicking the principle that the rule of law, that the debate amongst sovereign peoples should be the way that disputes are settled in this world. And he is replacing the rule of law for the rule of force. And sadly, he is demonstrating that not only does it work on the ground, but it also works in the wallet. He's demonstrating that a leader can profit politically and personally from the abuses that he conducts against his own people and his neighbours. And that's why, when I asked my right honourable and gallant friend who served with distinction in the Royal Artillery 
about the classic Gunner phrase, clout, don't dribble. What I'm actually asking about, and he recognises it, is why do we not say immediately and clearly that what we are seeing today is wrong? It is wrong for the people of the United Kingdom to have corrupt money flowing through our systems. It is wrong to have the profit of crime being laundered through our city and through jurisdictions overseas which depend on us. It is wrong to see the wages of war, quite literally, profiting a small cabal of thieves in Moscow. It is wrong because it undermines our security, it makes us more vulnerable, and sadly it exposes the people that we are privileged to represent to the dangers that we have, thank God, kept at bay for 80 years. It is wrong because it threatens the people of the United Kingdom. Now, there are ways that we've set out on how to address it. We've spoken at various points about the Foreign Agents Registration Act, about the exposure of beneficial ownership, not just in our own estates, but actually in the jurisdictions around the world. We've spoken about cleaning up the company's house register and giving power to the enforcement agencies that could actually start to, do, to take action on this. We've spoken about all these things for many, many years, and yet still we see names like Mickey Mouse and Adolf Hitler in the list of directors in Companies House. Still we see the toleration, sadly, of fraud in too much of our institutions. Sadly, still we do not see the resources going into the policing of these well, different I'm institutions. I will, yeah. I'm very grateful that he's making a superb speech. Um, one thing that often gets missed in this debate about how we crack economic crime are whistleblowers. Mm -hmm. They're the most likely people to identify wrongdoing in the banks he mentions and bring that to light, bring that to the enforcement agencies. Does he agree that whistleblower protection and potential remuneration should be included in this context? I absolutely agree with my, right, my honourable friend. He is completely right, as usual in highlighting that the protection of whistleblowers is an essential part of the exposure to justice of those who have committed crimes. Now, I'm going to close briefly by saying we need to think again about crime. We need to look again at the institutions, the law enforcement bodies, the agencies that are charged with protecting us. And we need to think really hard about their budgets because they are not simply ways of stopping the taxman from getting his hands on a little bit more loot. They are fundamental to the national security and the protection of our people. We need to think of them as agents of the state in the same way as the armed forces or the intelligence services. We need to think of them as the front line of protection of the people we're lucky to represent. We need to put the money, frankly, where so often our mouths have been in the acts that we've passed in this House that have not had the resourcing to make them not just law, but actionable law. Now, I will give way. I'm going to bang on about the Overseas Entities Bill. We had pre-legislative scrutiny. I sat on it with a number of colleagues from across this House. We agreed a, a, a set of amendments, the government accepted them and just failed to bring through the bills and the powers for Companies House and for the Land Registry. It's not just about the money, is it not? It's also about the government has been sitting on its hands for powers for these organisations. So the Honourable Member is right that there is more legislation that would help, but the fundamental I still stand by is that we need the resourcing for the agencies. Now, I'm just going to close by saying I do welcome the direction that this government has taken. I do welcome the commitment to doing more to defend the people of Ukraine, who we were privileged to go and visit as the Foreign Affairs Committee only a few weeks ago. I do welcome the fact that we are standing in defence of democracy, in defence of freedom, and in defence of the rule of law. But I do urge my right honourable and gallant friend to look again at these sanctions, many of which were introduced four or eight years ago by the United States Government. I was just reading the Treasury 
document of the United States Treasury that listed these in 2014, I think it was. We can go further. There is so much more we can do. And while, of course, it's right that we want to act in concert with our partners, in tandem with our allies, and make sure that we are not exposing, exposing division by acting alone, it is also true that one of the great strengths of this government, of this House, of this nation, is that we have running through the sinews of our economy so much of the world's finance that it puts a particular responsibility on us to stand up and defend the economic liberties that keep our people safe, enable our prosperity and build the rule of law around the world. Yeah.